three. <laughs> We're not even doing the jokes anymore. Three. Yeah, take three. <laughs> Deal with it. <laughs> so... We're about to do a session on, on federation. federation, and we're going to talk about two really powerful standards, SAML and OpenID Connect. But before we do, if you haven't watched our Federation 101 video, stop right now, go back, watch it, and then come back. Wait a second, think about it. We'll wait. Okay. Let's continue. Let's continue on. Okay. So, Federation, right? And I, Daniel mentioned the term standards, and standards are really, really important. The reason that standards are important is that standards tell us how to do something. And when you're dealing with federation, you're dealing with separate businesses, separate entities, possibly even separate continents. Mm -hmm. And in order to communicate with each other and understand what each other's saying, they have to talk in a standard way. Mm -hmm. And that's what the standard does. Mm -hmm. right? So the standard that we want to talk about is called SAML. So SAML stands for Security Assertion Markup Language, mm -hmm. which really doesn't mean anything. But the important piece about it is this piece down here, the markup language. That pretty much tells you that it's a form of XML. Mm -hmm. right? Markup language is sort of everything that looks like XML is a markup language. You can recognize it because it's got greater than and less than all throughout the text and is written into that. A security assertion. An assertion is simply a statement about security, so a security assertion is a statement about security made in a format or in an XML form. Right? It's a way for us to make these statements. The way that we work with these statements is using a protocol called SOAP, which we don't want to go into at all, but it stands for Simple Object Access Protocol, which I like because it's definitely not simple. There's no objects involved and pretty much you don't access anything. So, but it's the stand, oh, it's gone. <laughs> it's the standard language of web services, right? The traditional web services was XML over SOAP. Yes. Right. So now let's go into a little vignette, which you told me back in 2005, you had a mullet, you had oh, bell bottoms, all kinds of like very dated. I was, I was cool back there. then. Yeah. And so Alan did this little vignette to explain why SAML is important and how it works. And it stuck with me this long, so I'm hoping it sticks with you as well. So let's go. Okay. So really the challenge that we've got with Federation is we want to transfer some information from one entity to another. However, we don't want to transfer all the information about somebody, just certain attributes. right? And we've got to have some way to be able to propagate that over without giving away the entire identity. And so the example we're going to use here is a student in a school. Mm -hmm. right, you're registered in the school, and if you are a student in the school, you can get an access to the local library, right, and they give you the stuff and you can get access to virtual materials. But they want to check that you are indeed a student. So the way that we do that is our student, who is going to do in orange, because I haven't used orange yet. Mm -hmm. The student can come in here into the school and get a token, a postcard, with the school's name and address on it, and a secret number on the back. Mm -hmm. Not even secret, just a random number on the back. And they can now take that token to the library and give the library that token. And the library says, well, you can only get this if you are a student at the school. And I can validate that because the library can make a call back and say, the student that came in here with a number one, two, three, four, what are they studying? Mm -hmm. So you get sent back the uh, um, philosophy. How about political science? You get told you can study in political science and the library can now give you access to the appropriate stuff. The important thing here is notice the library still doesn't know your name. Yep. or your address, or your telephone number, or any other personal information about you. It simply knows that you are a student at this school and you are studying political science. So this is really powerful because now you take it away from kind of the simple scenario here and you change this to like a financial services company. And the financial services company wants to be able to present check images back to its customer. And it needs to connect to a third-party service 
that does check images. This same flow same works. Challenge. In other words, with SAML, you're able to provide um, something to the check imaging service that makes an assertion about that person that you have now have a trusted relationship between the financial institution and the check imaging service that says, hey, if you give me this little um, SAML assertion that has some kind of unique identifier to identify that I should be giving you this image um, back to the bank, we can now do that in that same process. So you can take kind of the, the school scenario that Alan talked about and apply it to kind of a complex digital transaction mm -hmm. in a standards-based way that keeps the end users safe. Absolutely, right? And that's the typical use case that we have for SAML Federation. So the question I have for you is if SAML has been so popular over the last couple of years, why do we need something to replace it, which is where OpenID Connect came about? Okay, so yes, SAML is pretty popular and it is still used a lot, mm -hmm. right? There, there's a lot of places that use it. The problem with SAML is actually not a problem with SAML. The problem was with the SOAP that disappeared off the page, mm -hmm. right? SOAP is a fairly heavyweight protocol to communicate to web services. And about, oh, I don't know, what was about five odd years ago, mm -hmm. a new standard started developing, which was called REST, right? And REST is a simpler, easier way to be able to make web service calls. Representational state transfer. Representational state transfer, which again is about as meaningful as so, so we can ignore that one too. But don't erase it. I will. Okay. The problem is that with REST, the format that we use for exchanging information is a protocol called JSON. Mm -hmm. J S O N, JavaScript object notation, if you care, right? Which is not an XML format. So the problem is, is that SAML, which is this big XML document, didn't work very well with these REST calls that were meant to be simple and light and easy to make, right? So essentially we had to replicate this entire thing utilizing JSON and REST. And that's basically what OpenID Connect is. Yeah. OpenID Connect is an assertion, a security assertion syntax for JSON that gives us the ability to make the calls over REST. Yeah. The one nice thing about it is that because REST is so lightweight, it makes it much easier to implement, much simpler to implement, especially in the social space, right? It's easy to get them up and running. So what you would say here is SAML conquered some really challenging use cases and conquered them well, but people demanded a lighter weight way of doing it, which is why OpenID Connect came about. Right. But they're kind of doing similar. They're doing very things. similar things. And in fact, the it, it's interesting in that the same group of people were involved in both standards in terms of working out the security concerns, et cetera, around the actual um, payload, the and actual assertion. What, what would, you, would you call this standards-based single sign-on? Would you call it standards-based authentication? How it, would you it classify could be, it? It could be both standard-based authentication, standard-based single sign-on. Some people have used it to try and do some kind of authorization not particularly good for that, but it can be used mm -hmm. for that. Essentially what it is, is it's, it's a way to communicate. It's in one of our earlier talks, we spoke about machine to machine communication. This is another example of that. It's a way for a machine to communicate to another machine security information about someone or something or some device. That's great, cool. Well, I think that, that kind of gives a good overview of SAML, OpenID Connect, and the use cases they solve for. So thank you, Alan. And thank you. It's really important that we don't share everything. Okay? So there are specific pieces of information that need to be shared between two entities. It might not be our name and address and things like that. Mm -hmm. So the way that SAML does that is let's assume that here we have a school, a university, mm -hmm. and you are a student at this university. Right. And you're going to draw a nice student yes. somewhere? <laughs> Ford Rock University. <laughs> We're retracting that. <laughs>
I know it was going really well, but I just, I was like, I'm tired. <laughs> you know, I saw that coming. <laughs> I know, no, I did too. I was, no, I, no. I, was, uh, I was like, no, no, no. Don't, don't. No. That's what it stands for. Yes, it does. <laughs> but thanks for that. <laughs> uh, still recording. Yeah. Okay. <laughs>